Listen, it's quite simple. Press the free like button if you think that there's levels and tiers to being called a legend in fake pro wrestling. Because I think that, man, people think that all icons and legends are in the same tier in the same category. No, bro, that's not how that works. When it comes to Mr. Tully Blanchard, I heard bits and pieces of his recent interview. Um, He said that the current product of all elite fake wrestling, he feels like it's kind of a poor man's version of the World Wrestling Federation. And I will admit, that's true. And he said that CM Junk was actually a nice guy backstage to him. But I have to fight him back on this that he said. He said that the current wrestlers on that roster did not ask him for advice. Now, there's people in comment sections that are saying, oh yeah, this is what CM Junk was talking about. He was working with children. Saying that, oh, why wouldn't you want advice from fucking Tully Blanchard? Oh man, those are kids, man. Wow, man, what the hell? Why wouldn't you take advice from fucking Tully Blanchard? And I'm like, look, man, <laughs> listen. I'm not trying to disrespect Tully Blanchard, but listen, I mean, look, if I was on that roster, listen, if I was a professional wrestler on that roster, if Con Man signed me maybe last year, right, and I was on that roster and I was in that locker room, would I ask Tully Blanchard for advice about fake wrestling? <laughs> no, I would not. No, uh, I'm sorry. I'm not going to ask fucking Tully Blanchard for advice because what can he tell me? that I don't already know. Listen, there's levels, right? In every sport, in every in every phase of life, there's always levels to everything you do in every job, in every workplace, there's always levels. Not everybody is on the same level, okay? Yeah, you most likely think that Mr. Blanchard is a legend, okay, he is. But last time I checked, he ain't no damn top 10, he ain't John Cena, he ain't Rock, right? He ain't RVD, he ain't Orton. I'm saying he ain't fucking Ric Flair. He ain't Shawn Michaels. So people need to just cool out, right? Not everybody is entitled to ask for advice from. Because let's say I think that I'm better as a wrestler than Tully Blanchard. Then why the fuck would I ask him for advice? Listen, there's only certain individuals you ask for advice, like in Ric Flair, right? I would ask Ric Flair tons of shit. I would ask Kane tons of shit. But there's certain dudes that I wouldn't ask anything. And look, I'm not trying to disrespect Mr. Tully Blanchard, but I'm just saying to think that is kind of fucking disrespectful not to ask some advice for fake wrestling. I'm like, no, man, like, listen, I I wouldn't ask R. Anderson for advice because, listen, this is my whole mindset. Listen, I'm asking Ric Flair for advice before Tully and a fucking Brain Busters. At the end of the day, you guys were lackeys for Rick fucking Flair. You guys were as muscle. So what the fuck can you tell me if I'm trying to be a star? You guys were tag team wrestlers. What can you honestly tell me that I don't already know, right? If I'm good enough to make it to all elite fake wrestling, then I mean, what what advice can you honestly tell me? Now, if, okay, there is levels, right? I'm not going to ask Tully for advice. He will have to actually walk up to me to give me advice. If that's the case, then yes, I'm going to have my ears open. That is that that's different. That's like a Jack Perry and a fucking Billy Gunn kind of thing. Where I did I did not like the fact that Jack Perry didn't like the fact that when Billy was trying to give him advice, he didn't like it. See, I did not like that. I'm like, bro, you ain't fucking Billy Gunn. That guy is a fucking Hall of Famer. Okay, he was in the fucking ass era getting major pops. He's an icon. So if he tells you, hey man, you gotta fucking slow down in your matches, then bro, you gotta take that advice. If Billy Gunn was to offer you advice, take it. That's different. When a guy like, like a Billy Gunn walks up to you to give you advice, okay, have your ears open and fucking listen. Because that guy is a fucking icon, that means he cares. That means he's trying to make you better. So that's different. But, bro, I don't have to walk up to an icon and have him give me advice about, about fucking anything. Come on, man. That's not how that shit works. It's like, holy fuck, like, fucking Hobbs, Warlow, uh, fucking Jay White. Damn, man. Like, everybody has to ask all the icons on a roster for advice. That's not how that shit works. There's levels to being a legend. 
Um, here's what I mean. From a talent perspective, let's try to compare, I don't know, Tully to a Hobbs. What can you tell Hobbs that Hobbs is not doing? Right? It's better if Hobbs was to get advice from Mark Henry. Right? Make sure you, you get advice from talents from the past that are kind of similar with your skill set. That actually makes more sense. But if I feel like, man, me and you are not at the same level when it comes to talent. So what advice can Tully actually give me that I'm not already doing? So that's different. I think people are, are actually not understanding what he was saying. Um, yes, maybe talent were not asking for advice. Okay, I don't I don't have to ask you anything, dude. Like, fuck. I mean, dude, fuck this whole gatekeeper shit. Dude, I I rarely ask for advice for anything on YouTube. No, look, when it comes to YouTube, I have never asked not one single fuck about advice on how to grow my channel. Dude, I came from the ground up. I had, what, maybe 10 subs all year long. And now, look where I'm at. I did not ask nobody for advice. I never asked no nigga for no fucking shoutouts. Um, I never did no fucking collabs. I start from the ground up by myself with no advice from anybody. Dude, it's called researching what you are trying to be successful at. Just research it. I don't have to ask advice to icons and legends all the time. Like, what the fuck? So, I'm actually on the side of all the talent on the all elite fake wrestling roster. It's like, listen, not everybody has to ask for advice. Come on, man. Listen, y'all are cappers. Huge, huge cap. Listen, I'm being real. I'm very, very old school when it comes to fake wrestling. I love 80s wrestling. But I gotta be look, I gotta be honest. I've only watched maybe two matches of the fucking Brain Busters in my whole entire life. Ever. Only two matches. That's it. And and listen, I didn't even know they were, they were even there. <laughs> so I think it was a. Uh, I think it was back in the first ever Survivor Series. And guess what? They were not the reason why I was watching that show. They were just there. So I'm saying like, how can you expect a guy in his 20s or his 30s to ask the Brain Busters for advice if what if they never watched the Brain Busters in their primes? And what if I think I'm better than R. Anderson? What if I think I'm better than Tully? What if I have a resume that's better than an Arn and a Tully. Then look, man, I'm not going to ask you for no fucking advice. That's like saying, how about this comparison? I don't know. Uh, why would a guy like an L.A. copyright ask Ted fucking DiBiase for advice? Right? Um, why would John Cena ask Ric Flair for advice at this point? That's what I mean. Um, what's a better comparison? Why would Goof ask Tully Blanchard for advice? Why would Goof Why would he ask, I don't know, uh, fucking, who's a legend? Why would he ask Kane for advice? It's like, look, man, he is doing pretty good right now, okay? Goof he's doing pretty good right now. So why the fuck would he ask for advice for from, from icons at this point of his career? Right? Like I said, there's levels. What if I think I'm a legend? Right? What if Gufa thinks he is a legend right now as we speak? So, not not everybody should be asked for advice to a legend if they think they are better. Listen, when it comes to fake wrestling, it's all about confidence. Maybe a hangman page, maybe he thinks he's already good enough not to ask for advice. Which is, listen... I have to admit, Heyman Page has been in fake wrestling for the past 10 years. So, what hasn't he already seen to ask for advice? I gotta, I gotta keep it real. Um, like for, like, for example, at this point, um, I don't know, why would Finn Balor ask, ask a Booker T for advice, right? Um, let's see, uh, who's a good, who's a good comparison? Uh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Why would fucking Dominic ask Wade Barrett for advice? <laughs> right, right? Dominic is about to have a better career than Wade Barrett. So, not everybody deserves to be asked for advice about fake wrestling. 
Like, like I said, there's levels. Just because you are a legend, that don't mean you are a Ric Flair. All right, John Cena, all right, Rock, or Stone Cold. I will ask Stone Cold for advice, right? Um, would I ask a Dean fucking Malenko for advice? I'm sorry, no. No, man. Would I ask a Dre Lynn for advice? No, no. I will ask a RVD for advice, right? Like, like, dude, there's levels to this. We are all not at the same level when it comes to talent and performance, when it comes to fake wrestling. Would I ask Tommy Jimmy for advice? Yes. If I'm trying to be a hardcore wrestler, yes, I'm going to ask Tommy Jimmy for advice. That makes perfect sense. So you have to match other people's skill, skill level. That's what I mean. Like I said, Hobbs should ask advice from a Big E because they are very, very similar. Like I said, that makes fucking sense. Um, like a uh, big cast, he should ask advice from Kane, right? Because they're both tall and big. That makes sense. But, bro, nobody has anything in common with a Tully Blanchard on that roster. Last time I checked, I'm sorry, he was boring. I did research on Tully Blanchard when he was with the fucking Bray Busters, and I'm sorry, he was boring. I'm sorry, come on, man. Damn, he was boring. R. Anderson was doing all the talking for that group. Facts on facts. It was R. Anderson that was doing all the talking. So I'm saying, what can Tully tell a Jack Perry? What can Tully tell a Adam Page? Or a Jay White? Or a OJ, the Juice Man Robinson? What can Tully tell those guys that they are not already doing? So my whole top point is, look, we have to calm down on this whole, oh man, that whole roster has a whole bunch of kids on it. Oh man, they don't want to ask Tully for advice. I'm like, man, they were not born when Tully was in his prime. That's my point. They're trying to make like, bro, they don't know him. Okay, Tully. Look, I saw two matches. I mean, he was a boring dude. Come on, man. There's a reason why people compare FTR to the boring ass Bray Busters. Okay, I saw two other matches a long, long time ago. I'm like, man, boring as fuck. They are boring. What can R. Anderson tell me? Right. Um. What can R. Anderson tell a Wardlow? Hence why Wardlow don't need him anymore. Right? Now, do you get it? There's a reason why we don't see R. Anderson with a Wardlow. Not anymore. Wardlow don't need him. Like I said, there's levels. Now, if you are trying to be a great tag team, then yes, I can see you asking advice to a Jeff Hardy or a Matt Hardy. That makes sense. So, it makes sense to ask advice to people in your field, which is tag team wrestling, okay, that that makes sense. But Tully doesn't match other people's careers and, and fucking skill sets. What can Tully tell the Young Bucks? Seriously. What can Tully tell Private Party? What can Tully tell fucking Bowens and Max Caster? Seriously, like, like I said, there's levels to this. Just because you're an icon, that don't mean you can help me on trying to get where I'm trying to get at. If I see in your career, I mean, you wasn't all that great. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's it. I'm, I'm done.